This month on FEI Equestrian World, we travel to the Kingdom of Cambodia to witness an unusual development program. The first step to be allowed to go outside and to build this uh, future for the Khmer Riders. We meet a rising star of the dressage world. I always try to look at all of the big riders and find something I want to emulate. And a shining star in the vaulting world. But first, to Southern Australia. Australia is a nation with a very proud heritage, and its equestrian history is no exception. In a nation where the horse was integral to its early success in many walks of life, it's perhaps no surprise that the Australian stock horse, bred from horses shipped originally from England, is still very much part of the Australian equestrian scene. Many didn't survive because obviously it's a pretty long journey to come out um, by ship in those days and uh, some of them were picked up in South Africa and brought over but the majority of them came straight out from England. A uh, majority of them in those early days were what we would now call thoroughbred. Um, with a smattering of Arab, uh, a bit of Welsh pony a bit later on and Hackney pony just to add to that. When the first settlers arrived, nothing was known of the continent and exploration needed horses with very particular characteristics. It started out in the colonial days where explorers were um, crossing the Blue Mountains, for instance, um, through some very, very rugged country, looking for grasslands for cattle. Um, these horses had to be ridden day by day after day after day without much in the way of a change of horse. Um, they had to do long distances. Um, they had to stand up to wear and tear. If they lost a shoe, they still had to carry on. Um, there were no replacement vets or anyone out there, so they had to be tough. They had to um, be able to go for many, many days, and the stamina and the toughness is certainly one of the attributes of the breed. As the country developed, so too did its horses. The cattle work certainly meant that these horses went into the outback, uh, some very unknown terrain, uh, very rough terrain, um, where there were wild bulls, scrubbers as we used to call them, um, into bush country, into mountain country, so you got the slightly smaller horse in the mountain country and the very long striding horse through the flatter country. But again, toughness, toughness to be able to take a rider carrying weight, um, carrying supplies, so that meant he had to have a very strong back. We also needed a horse with the right shape of shoulder and wither to carry the saddle without having it too tight, this sort of thing. So um, a lot of detail going into the selection of these horses to do the job. A lot of those outback areas never had roads, uh, never had more than a bush track going through them. Um, and harness horses, uh, the heavy horses that pull boilers and, and generally allowed civilization to develop, didn't come till a lot later and they eventually came side by side, but they didn't do the work that the, the Australian stock horse is noted for. As Australia developed into the modern nation it is today, the stock horse could have disappeared into obscurity, but this is clearly a breed with staying power. He certainly evolved from that tough using horse into a leisure and sporting horse now, and in many areas of Australia there are still places where the horse is all that is used, in conjunction sometimes with helicopter, but in the closer to metropolitan areas, um, we have Australian stock horses used for all ranges of disciplines, eventing, dressage, high level dressage, high level eventing, show jumping. But then we also have some traditional Australian sports that they excel in and one of these is polo cross. We also have specialised sporting events now for the Australian stock horse competition itself, which is very, very specialised and that's camp drafting, which is a sport uh, traditional in Australia which shows off the horse that is able to do cattle work but also um, working stock horse classes where the rider demonstrates the usefulness of the horse a lot of events that are quite um, highly specialized we, we walk out there we, we have a um, we get told what to do by the judge and she likes uh, to see a bit of whip cracking just the quietness the temperament and so we just go out there, we crack a few whips at any pace, they, they don't react to it. Um, and we go on from there, we go galloping, we can crack the whip galloping, any pace. 
It's both character, that's just who they are. They're, it's the breed. It's definitely the breed. And, and, the, and the rider bond as well. They trust you immensely. We're still using lines that are being tested in modern sports today. They're strong, they're, they've got the mind that we want, they've got the balance, um, which the critical things for us are mind, balance and toughness. Um, so all the rest comes together if you've got those things. And so we believe that that translates very, very quickly into the same qualities that you need in the other disciplines as proven by the performance of these horses. The slightly taller ones get selected by people who choose to go eventing and even though they haven't been selected specifically for jumping, this is just a natural thing that stock horses are always done. A lot of stock horses have that residual endurance there, um, but as we call this the breed for every need, um, it's certainly the case that uh, Australian stock horses, uh, some of which I've bred myself, um, have been used in endurance and have actually competed against Arabs. We've had horses go to Dubai and compete against the Arabs themselves. These are Australian stock horses still doing it. The attributes that have made the Australian stock horse such a key element of the country's past look set to provide it with a certain sporting future. The, the breed is going from strength to strength and it's now being exported to several countries. Uh, Polo Cross is taking off in about 17 countries around the world. There are now world championships. Uh, horses are being exported for that. We've also got horses being exported all around the world now for polo. Some of our polo lines are just incredible. For me, it's like having old-fashioned values. Um, an old-fashioned horse, but with all the quality there that old-fashioned people, uh, I mean, <laughs> well, anyway, with quality. <laughs> if you breed a quality animal with the mind, with the balance, with that toughness, um, they're not contradictory items to breed for. It just means that you're going to take longer to get there. So long as you've got a vision and you really know what you're wanting to produce, you will get there.